All right, guys, let's check out the Jaws watch. This is the Ulsta Nautoscoff Super Automatic 1970 re-edition. So Ulsta is a brand that was, you know, it's been around for a long time. I'll, I'll give you some links in the description. You can do that research yourself. But essentially, this was a brand that was out and it, it was doing well or well enough to be around anyway. And then the quartz crisis happened and like many other brands that did them in. They just couldn't recover from it. So it's been, you know, brought back to life more recently and they're putting out some really cool watches and they're actually made in Switzerland. Now this one uses the Seiko, Japanese Seiko NH35 movement in it. So it's a little bit backwards than we're used to, right? A lot of times you'll see even um, whatever micro brand or any you know, whatever brand, pick it, and then, you know, we they they may thrive or we aspire to see them put a Swiss movement in it. This is kind of the other way around. This is a, a Switzerland brand and they're using the Japanese movement. So, but part of that is to keep the cost down and it's, you know, a nice solid movement to pair up really nice with a, a nice solid watch. So, but what we're really looking at here is the heritage, the um, tie to the movie and this was the watch that the character Matt Hooper wore that you know played by Richard Dreyfuss in the movie Jaws and uh, so you can look back to pictures I'm not going to put them in or anything like that because I don't want to get in trouble so uh, but you can certainly go to the websites that I'll put the links in the description you can search it up yourself uh, maybe you're a Jaws fan uh, like a lot of us probably watched that movie and liked it or didn't like it one way or the other but uh, we you know, I thought the last time I watched it, I didn't pay attention to what was on Guy's wrist. You know, so when a watch like this comes out, this is the this is the Jaws watch or one of them, you know. Um, I instantly went and looked, like a lot of us. Oh, yeah, that is it. That is the right watch. So, oddly enough, this is a crazy small watch. Uh, but wears big? It's really weird. So, I measure the case at 38.5 millimeter width, which is a little tricky to do it. You know, there's no crown guards or anything, but I still have to get offset of the crown and then go from here to here. But I measure 38 and a half, 43.15 lug to lug. So pretty short lug to lug as well. The thickness is 15.7, but that's including that double dome, slightly boxed sapphire crystal. 20 millimeter lug width here, a very cool retro inspired bracelet. Taper slightly down to 18 millimeter. And then you have a simple clasp signed, of course, with a great white shark, a.k.a. Jaws. Uh, simple fold over. It's all stamped, even the center part, but it's hollowed out. Kind of cool. Keeps it a little bit thinner, too, because that piece, you know, sandwiches down. Four micro adjusts, no dive extension, not really needed. You know, with Jaws in the water, you're going to want to stay on the shore or in the boat. I don't even know even you weren't even safe in the boat, I guess. So 120 click bezel. The bezel is actually pretty stiff on this guy. Nice audible, but it's, I mean, it's stiff. Like you gotta really pinch it and uh, spin it. So, but uh, lines up good. Interesting, um, you know, balance between the black portion and then the silver portion. And then I'm, I, you know, I already heard a, a comment or read a comment about the lack of the loom pip there. Yeah, whatever. Is what it is, guys. So screw down crown. It is a uh, water resist of 300 meter. And we can take a look at the labeling on the dial here. So it has a nice black dial, all printed on indices and Arabics at the 1269. Date cut out at three, obviously. Kind of a sword style hand. Nice arrow point on the tip of the seconds hand there. Super autom automatic written in a, a really nice font. And then shock resist. There are actually some ISO certifications on this, like I said. Look that stuff up in the details in the description when I um, post the links there. So labeled as 999 feet there. That's kind of fun. And uh, you can see it's really nicely heavily printed on uh, material. They used C3 loom. So the loom is going to be great on this too. I'll get a loom shot at the very end. Non-signed, just polished uh, crown there, but easy to operate. Now the bracelet, let's see if I can get you uh, some looks here. So it is a, as you can see, I don't know if you can pay attention to what you're looking at there, but it is a uh, pin and tube. 
And I did size this one, so I will give you a wrist shot right now, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the bracelet because it is a, it's not super difficult, but you know, the pin and tube, if, if it's your first time, you know, sizing it, it can be a little tricky, I suppose. So uh, before I forget why I'm putting this on wrist, big thanks to John, my buddy John over at the watch gauge. He sent this in. So these are limited production, 1975, right? Fun year, great year. I love that year. And uh, that's how many they're making of these, 1,975 of them. They're doing 500 per year. And so when they come in to whoever's going to carry them, like John at the watch gauge, he pretty much sells out instantly. And once those sell out, then he's got people emailing them, putting them on a list. So they pretty much sell before they even come in. Uh, pretty crazy, but it's a cool watch, and it's definitely going to be a collectible. So for the people out there that like to collect cool, vintage-inspired watches, this one's got to be up there high on that list. The price tag on it is about $1,000. So to get in on this watch, it's not cheap. It's not going to be for everybody, but it's certainly for enough people because they sell out quick. Um, I did a weight on it sized for my seven and a quarter inch wrist. It weighs in at 151 grams. Um, so kind of, you know, Seiko SKX-ish in its size right about there. Now, if you're worried, again, I, I just showed you on my, you know, just over seven inch wrist. Um, if you're worried about the way these links interact with uh, the feel on wrist, um, you got to remember the really short lug to lug. So you want those to kind of, you know, hug your wrist and protrude out. And then these are going to follow your contour, your wrist down a little bit. And then you jump down into these very stubby links here and you're going to be able to get a perfect size. So they're, you know, clearly labeled which way you drive the pin out. So once you drive the pin out, you uh, pop out however many links you want to do. I did two links out of each side and that seemed to give me a perfect fit. So here is how the links are outside. So you can see they're really short and they don't fully articulate, like meaning that they don't fold over on each other. They're kind of encapsulated within each other. As you can see they're you know, the center part is all the way through. So they lock together actually pretty good and pretty tight. So like so, if that makes sense. So there is a look at the links and they do use, oh, you know what? It is a split pin, my mistake. I was getting mixed up because I have a couple other links over here. It is a split pin, apparently. Yeah, that's definitely a split pin. Ah, I remember sizing this one now. Sorry about the pin and collar thing, guys. It's it's a split pin. 100% confirmed split pin. Super easy to size. Don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. Drive them out. Put them back in. No big deal. Sorry for that false alarm. All right, so I think I covered everything on this. And, um, you know, for kicks, let me pop out the SKX. I know I'm going a little long here. I didn't really prep to do a comparison to the SKX, so, but it's within hands reach. It only takes a second. And I know a lot of people appreciate that because this is, you know, kind of a smaller watch. And I'm trying to holding them at, at about the, you know, same plane. So you can see there, um, it's quite a bit smaller, but I think coupled with this bracelet, I would easily keep this thing on this bracelet. The bracelet is so cool and uh, just really captures the retro inspired design, obviously. So you can see there's a nice polished case back with a great white on there, tons of information, the branding, and the number. Oh, I just noticed that. This is number 413 of 1975. Thank you, Alsta, for putting the actual number on the watch. I appreciate that. Also, the packaging that comes with it is different than I've ever seen. Check this out. So you got like this full on, I mean, it's it's leather. It smells like leather. It's nice quality. And when you pop it open, it's all snapped together. Now you can get the watch out like that, but this actually snaps completely out of this cushion. So you can get the watch on there and then you can snap it into place on both sides. And then you can close it up. So I just haven't seen packaging like this. I, I think it's kind of sweet. I like it. All right, so let me give you that loom shot because I've dragged on darn near 10 minutes. Now, obviously, there's a lot of loom going on behind me, but you can see this thing holds its own. It has good 
application of C3 Loom. It is no slouch. I mean, there it is next to an SKX. It's right there with it, guys. So it's a very cool vintage reissue Jaws watch, collectible and wearable. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Big thanks to John for sending that in, and I'll catch you on the next vid.